I'm going to suggest to you there's other things than the science and the practical skills. There's some philosophy. And I think it goes unexamined often. It's underlying a lot of what we do. I am very well aware dog trainers are divisive about a lot of things, and there's kind of camps, and we get in arguments, and I've been in some of those arguments, and I, I know all that. And I'm not so much trying to provoke an argument as to say, I think we can talk about this. Like, can we talk about some of the assumptions that dog training approaches make, and why would we look at those? Because they have implications. I'd say they have implications on the joy of the human and the dog. Now, you just said, wait a minute, did we talk all day about dogs getting reinforcement? It's a different thing to say, my job is to reinforce you for behaviors I want to see more of, that's my role, than to say you have to earn every good thing in life. I, you're going to go, she's just using semantics. Not necessarily, because it puts you in a different mind space to say, my responsibility to reinforce behaviors I like, pretty cut and dried behavior analysis. That's not a very sexy story. I'll give you a better story here in a second. But that's really what we want to do. But we've given it a narrative that's easy for people to understand and is catchy that I think comes along with some baggage. So I'm simply saying it's not that that's wrong. I just want to look at what baggage do we bring when we say that, that might be getting in our way, might be a stumbling block for us. All right. I like peer-reviewed articles. But he wrote a popular article for this um, international wolf organization. There's their website, wolf.org. And their archives are there free. Okay, so this is 2008. Let me pull up the R document, because here it is. Okay, let's make it a little smaller, because I'm going to read you a paragraph, and you can read along with me, because here it is. Whatever happened to the term alpha? Wolf. You know what's fantastic about this article? It's Dr. Meech saying, I've been studying wolves for 50 years. I helped coin that term, alpha wolves. Here's why it's now wrong. Here's why it's the best we could do 30 years ago. Here's why I, who helped promulgate it, would like it to stop now. What got me, uh, you know, we don't have a lot of time for this, so I'm, let me do this quickly. Why did I even question this uh, incident with my own dog, Nick? It was in receiving nothing in life is free advice myself from a colleague with my own problem dog. So after I had given out this advice comfortably for a long time, when D Nick had a regression in his own rehab of aggression, he bit two of my female friends, different incidents, not hard, but he'd never been reactive to females. Um, I had the experience of having a dear friend of mine who I like and respect very much um, give me the nil of advice back and say, I was allowing Nick too many freedoms, and why did he get the chance to be up on the couch with me, and he should be tethered, and... And in the moment of receiving the advice, literally in that moment, it was a flash of me going, this is crazy. It has no relevance to his aggression. It just doesn't feel like it, it just feels irrelevant. And I was upset. And I wasn't upset at my friend, who was giving me the best advice she knew. She gave me a real gift. She gave me the insight to go, wait a minute. I'm now in the receiving role, and I don't think it's helpful. Um, so it was that little epiphany with Nick. I am a bored dog. And I'm going to come up, and I'm going to nudge your, your elbow. And you're doing NILF, right? You're doing NILF, and so you're going to follow the protocol that says, I'm going to ask you to sit. It doesn't say ignore this. It says, before your dog gets in, I'm saying I'd like some attention. And you're going to go, oh, I have to ask you to sit. So Dale asked me to sit, and I, the dog, do. And then you give me attention. That didn't solve anything, right? I have a little behavior chain going that started with me seeking attention. And you got a training trial in there, like, yay, you got a reinforcement for sit. That's good. But it didn't actually lessen the probability that I'm going to bug you the next time, right? right? It feels like you did something because you asked, say please. But you see the analogy of a kid is going, I want it, I want it, I want it. And you said, well, say please first. You all get that isn't really effective, right? <laughs> kid goes, please, and gets that thing. You're going to get that tantrum the next day increase. I don't want the attention seeking. Right? So I'm just saying where you insert the but ask them to sit first. That can be problematic. If you say, well, I give food and attention contingent on your good behavior, but otherwise I'm, I'm banishing you. You're, you're safe and you're, you're in that room or that crate and you've got some things to do, but I'm not giving you food or attention. Do you see where you can, it's a slippery slope. You can get to this point where you go, food's a positive reinforcer, right, isn't it? 
Not if you're really, really hungry. Then it gets rid of pain. Then it's relief. Isn't that interesting? Food can be a positive reinforcer right now. I'm not really starving. It would be good to eat. But if I had gone without eating for a couple of days, food for me is the relief from this gnawing pain in my stomach. It's a different quadrant. But you can also do that with attention, right? So pithy advice. Do you know the um, fitness advice that suggests if you walked 10,000 steps a day, you'd be a whole lot healthier if that's the only thing you did? Like you got a pedometer, you counted your steps, you walked about five miles a day. I love that. It's not the whole advice for fitness, right? If you're walking and chain smoking, right, it's not going to do you much good. But that's good foundational advice for physical fitness, and people can do it. So I've sort of looked at that and said, you know what? I want my clients to do C, mark, and reinforce their dogs 50 times a day. Now, do I care that much about the 50? No, not so much. But I want it to be an aspirational number, right? I don't want to say to someone who's never used food in training and never reinforced their dog, and it doesn't just have to be food. But I don't want to say, yes, yeah, start with 50 repetitions a day. They're going to go, 50? Like taking a completely sedentary person and say, let's walk five miles. You're going to be like, are you crazy? Uh, let's start with a half a mile. Let's start with 10 reinforcements a day where you catch that dog doing something you like and reinforce them for it. Okay? Concentrated bouts throughout the day. When I'm working with new students, I often say, you know what, let's even strip it down more simple. See, mark, toss food. Feed. We fall into the trap of people going, oh, it's all about the food. That's all you people care about. It's all about the treats. It's not, but food is a very effective, user-friendly reinforcer. And frankly, you have to feed the dogs every day anyway. It's not like an added task. It's not like you go, oh, dang, I got a dog, but I didn't know I'd have to feed him every day for the rest of his life. <laughs> like, you kind of signed up for the feeding every day already. I'm just telling you to move some of those calories into more effective timing, contingent on behavior you like. Just shifting some of that food. Okay, so now what's the, what's the difference here? The difference is not the dog's responsibility to earn the reward. It's your responsibility to get in your 50 trials. It's your role. It's different. Guess what? There are very few dogs that asked to come live with you. Like, they didn't go, hello. Oh, now, sometimes there's an exception, but I mean, mostly we make a decision to... Go to the shelter, go to the breeder, and we go, we'd like to add this dog to our lives. This is great. But as you do that and you say, dog coming into my family, you just signed up for the responsibility of saying, and I will teach you the things you need to know to live with humans peaceably and happily. Well, to me, that means, okay, I have a, I'm a teacher. I'm going to teach you the things you need to know. I'm your cultural liaison. Let me teach you how to get along with humans. I'm your translator. What's a better word for me, I think, than... Then leader, as I struggle with that and say, I don't want to tell people not to be leaders. That's, that's not exactly what I mean. But that emphasis on leaders still falls back into our history of, and I'm in charge and I'm dominant. Not always. You can be a leader without that. But I'm saying I think it's, um, it's a loaded term. Or it's at least a term that needs further definition.